Hey guys, let's first introduce the elephant in the room. The title of this video, Automatic CSS versus Advanced Thema. Purposely provocative because it is a silly question. They are completely different things. It is like comparing Rank Math to WP Rocket. Both of them affect your Google rankings, but they are completely different things providing completely different features and benefits. I see Advanced SEMA and Automatic CSS in the same vein. There is a very minor crossover that I think people have grabbed onto and gone, oh, this is going to compete with ACSS. Um, I don't think Maxine Begwin, who's the author of uh, Advanced SEMA, even sees it that way because it is completely different. And I'm, I'm not sure why so many people are asking that question. Now, let's look at it from a very simple perspective. Advanced Thema is a bunch of productivity tools to help you be more productive in Bricks. That's pretty much what it is. Automatic CSS is a CSS framework utility. Just from those two statements, you can see they are completely different things. So let's have a look at that. If we look at um, so if we look at Advanced Thema, what do we have here? We've got some topography that we can set. These are variables, clamp variables, uh, spacing variables, which are based on clamp as well. Border radiuses, again, based on clamp. These are all variables that will become available in Advanced SEMA. Um, custom variables you can create. Some grids, which are based on an autofill uh, grid with uh, minimum column widths, etc. Uh, classes you can import, resources. I'm not even sure what that is. Um, all of this here is stuff you have to do yourself. You have to go and decide what is my font H1 going to be? What's my font H3 going to be? What kind of spacing names am I going to have? And what, what, is, what are their values going to be? Um, you have to create all this. This is not a framework. This is a way of you creating your own mini framework in a sense. So it's not a CSS framework. It is a way of you managing variables. There's a cool little add-on in Bricks where you click on a little V on the input boxes and you can see all of these variables and you can select from those. So it's a really cool thing. If you don't have ACSS, you don't have a need for ACSS, this can be really useful. Okay, I'll put it straight out there. This can be really useful. However, ACSS is a completely different beast. ACSS is a framework. What you're putting in here is your color palettes, your sizes that you want to set everything to as your reference points, your spacing reference points, blah, 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 uh, all the stuff here, your stylings. What this then does is it goes off and it uses a SAS framework and creates a CSS framework in the background with a whole bunch of preset, predefined variables and utilities based on the properties that you've given it. So if you look at their cheat sheet over here, let's look at the ACS cheat sheet. In here, it is just a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just looking at the variables. All this is created for you. You don't have to go into your theme settings and create all those. That's all done for you, right? This is already done, and it's really well-researched, well-thought out, uh, and well-supported. It is something you can get used to. You learn these, and you use the same methodologies on every page, every site, and you have a consistent way of working um, where, you know, a year from now, you come back to that site and you know exactly how you've done it because you've used the same methodology on every single site. That is the benefit of ACSS to me. Uh, and, uh, and you get Kevin. And Kevin's a great resource. He's passionate about it. He, uh, he uses it himself. He shows you in all his videos how he uses it. And it inspires you to use things in a very consistent uh, way. So... I think ACSS is more of a framework that's heavily supported. Um, the advanced thema, this side of it is really up to you. You have to do this, right? You have to figure out what sizes you're going to have, what spacing, what radiuses. You have to do all that, all right? So it's a big difference between the two. Now, what advanced thema has that ACS doesn't have is a bunch of add-ons and tweaks for the Bricks editor. Uh, and there's a few other things there I'm not even going to go into here, but I'm, I'm going to look at how can we use these two together. 
Because that's another question. Can I use Advanced SEMA with ACSS? I would say yes, I'm going to show you that. But one point I was going to make here first is that if you're going to use these two together, don't even bother with any of this. Don't bother with any of these variables here. Don't bother with your color palettes. There's no point you're going to use the ACSS color palettes, ACSS variables, okay? So what you are going to do is enable a few things in here. You can enable your contrast tracker, your X mode, things like that. They're just little handy utilities. Uh, the things I'm going to enable is uh, reorder the global classes alphabetically. So that is so that, where am I in here? If I go to one of these and click on my classes, these are now in alphabetical order. Okay, so that's pretty much all that's doing. Um, not worrying about any of these. We're going to turn off our variable picker because that is for these variables. And we're not going to use those. Uh, this here, enable autocomplete for CSS variables and enable plain classes. Those are very useful for ACSS and I'm going to show you why. Um, the highlighting of classes when selected. So when you click on a class in here, so if I select a class there, uh, it's going to show all of the elements on the page that use that class. That could be useful as well. Okay. Um, the enable account, so that's how, how often, how many times you've used the class. We'll leave that on. Preview on hover, another little productivity benefit. Preview on hover for your color and preview on hover for your, cl for your classes in there as well. These are brilliant. Now, I'm not going to worry about anything else. Just those things there are going to make it actually easier to work with ACSS. So let's have a look at that. So what we have is a basic section and a container. Inside that container, I am going to put a block. In that block, I'm going to use, I love BIM, so I'm going to start a BIM uh, mention here. I'm going to call this, so I'm going to call this my services uh, list. So I've got a block and I'm going to tell that to be Custom, I'm going to make this a UL. Okay, I'm going to call that my UL. And I'm going to then add another div under that. Another block, I should say. And on that block, I'm going to call that my LI. Okay, this is basic bricks. And then we're going to get into using the automatic CSS. So in the automatic CSS here, uh, sorry, in the class, I'm going to grab that services list class. Grab that, put it there. And I'm going to call that my item. Okay. And in that there, I'm going to add just a basic text. And then I'm going to just duplicate that out. So we've got two of those. Let's make it three. So we've got three allies that have got basic text in them. All right, now we can see here, I don't know if you can tell, actually if I go on mouse, we can see we've got padding there. We can use a ACSS utility on this to get rid of that. Let's call that list, uh, list none. Now we got rid of our extra padding and also our uh, list, uh, what do they call it? List, whatever style, um, to none, to get rid of the uh, disk, whatever that's there. So that's the basics of it. Now, let's turn this into a grid. And we can use a ACSS utility for this. So let's call it a grid. And we'll call that a grid three. So we've got a three column grid that we've created here. Um, you could also do that on the actual class. I'm just using this quickly to show you. All right, let's go to our services list. Now, our services list is a grid. Actually, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to, re, I'm going to rethink this. So I go back to my services list, and I'm going to make that a grid. Okay, and on the tick grid template columns, I'm going to put grid. To see if we've got anything there. Grid, uh, grid three, bar grid three. Okay, and on the gap, I'm going to type in space. We want space of medium. Okay, so these are ACSS variables. Now, I didn't have to go over to ACSS and go in here, it'll give me a grid uh, variable. Uh, what do we got here? So we've got a grid three, copy that, come back here, paste that in there. All I did was I started typing grid, 
And then I'll go, oh, there's all my grids, grid three. Okay, so I've now created a utility, sorry, a BEM block, which is a grid using an ACSS variable for spacing, ACSS variable for grid, and I didn't have to even remember what they were. I didn't have to go to the cheat sheet. I just start typing and I get an autocomplete here. And that is because of this feature here in Advanced Thema. Okay, so already we've created a productivity improvement using ACSS. This isn't an ACSS thing. This is a bricks thing that is actually pulling on those ACSS variables. Okay, so there's our first benefit there. All right, now let's go back to our one of our allies. So we go to service list item. And let's say on that we want that to have some padding. So we go to our layout, go to our padding, link more sides, and start typing space. Oh, look at that. ACSS variables. Why it's doubling up on these, I'm not sure. Maybe it's in the code they doubled up. Uh, maybe that's something, Maxime, if you're watching, that you can look at is to remove duplicates here. Let's say we want a small padding all the way around on that. All right, again, we didn't have to go to the cheat sheet and go, oh, what's our space? What's our space for small? Oh, that's that one there. And, and look, if you use this a lot, you're going to remember these anyway. But this is just a productivity thing, I think. So there's our space in there. Let's say, okay, and the other thing, see, so you've got this blue border around everything here, and that's because that class is selected. So if we deselect that class, our blue border is gone. And that's just to show us everywhere on the editor where we're using that selected class. All right, so on that service item, we want to put a border on it. We go border. So let's say we'll do a nice big fat one, say two pixels. And we want to maybe a dotted border. And we're going to make it a radius of what? RAD. Oh, look at all of our ACS variables here. Radius card. Didn't have to remember it, did I? Now, one thing for Maxime, when you do select these, it does actually close that uh, dialog. So we want to link all those. Then we've got our card radius there. Uh, color. We can just pick our ACSS color. Let's say we'll just pick that one there for now. Uh, and we've got a color there. Uh, let's pick a lighter one. Okay, there we go. We've got a light dotted border for our card. Back to it. Now, let's say we want to change the background color on that. Select our background color, and we want to use a maybe an action color. There's all our action colors there. Watch what happens as we roll our mouse over. We're getting all these variations showing uh, in the editor before we even select them. So let's say we want that uh, action light trans 20. Click that. It's updated our class, it's updated everywhere. Right, so we don't have to remember any of these. Uh, I think it's brilliant. I think it's a, it adds to the productivity of ACSS. Okay, let's have a look at one other, which is, see here we've got the service list and list, I, list none. Little P up here. So that was by enabling, enable plain classes, right? We click on that little P there. We just get a basic list. But we the cool thing here is that it, it's still got the autocomplete. So let's say on that we want a uh, padding of Excel. We want a margin, uh, margin top of, where's our tops? Tops of XXL. Update the classes. And it automatically updates here. So we can use our autocomplete, and it shows we've got four classes used. Autocomplete in the plain classes, and it's a lot quicker to type those out than it is to go type in here, click, type in here, click. You just P, start typing, space, um, color, or column count, whatever, um, and the autocomplete works. So this is working with ACSS. I like it. I think it's a great pairing of these two they are not competitive products they are complementary products as far as i'm concerned 